so let us now substitute our values and find out the value of a call option quickly c is going to be equal to the stock price first of all so let me write here stock price sixty dollars was the stock price times the n of d1 which we have found out is 0.77 so let us write down 0.77 and after that what we are supposed to do put a minus sign and then inside the square bracket we have to take the present value of the exercise price so let me first of all write down the exercise price 56 and then we have to divide it by e raised to the power of r which is 14 percent so i am writing here 0.14 times the time time was half a year so 0 0.5 and then what we are going to do is um, let me get rid of this superscript and then close the bracket and then we have to multiply this thing by n of d2 which is equal to 0 0.71 so i write here 0 0.71 now is equal to 60 times 0.77 gives me 46.2 and then minus I am going to do that thing on our calculator here. Um, let us see how much do we get. First of all let us uh, solve the denominator e raised to the power of 0.14 times 0.5. I do not have uh, an e function on this calculator the desktop calculator but I know the value of e 2.7183. So I am going to use that and find out my answer. Let me first of all find out the answer to the denominator that is e which is 2.7183 and that is going to be raised to the power of a product between 0.14 and 0.5. So 0.14 times 0.5 is 0 0.07. So I am raising it to 0 0.07 and that gives me 1.0725. So I am going to use that now here inside the square bracket I write 56 and then I divide this 56 by 1.0725 and then I am going to close this bracket and then write outside 0 0.71 and after that it is a matter of simple uh, computation 46.2 minus what do we have inside the bracket let us do that quickly 56 divided by 1.0725 is equal to this and times 0 0.71 is equal to 37.07 so let me write here 37.07 and that means 46.2 46.2 minus 37.07 is going to give me the value of this call option which is 9.13 or $9.13. So now what I can do with this call option uh, is that I can use it in the put call parity condition to find out the value of a put option as well. Now let us look back at our data here. The stock price is $60 and the exercise price is 56 dollars. Uh, what do you expect this uh, call option to be in the money or out of the money? Exercise price is less than the stock price therefore the call option should be in the money and therefore should have a value which should be greater than the value of a put option. So at the outset it tells us that when we, when we are going to find out the value of this put option it should be less than $9.13 because the call option is supposed to be in the money in this case because exercise price is less than the stock price. The put option is not supposed to be in the money so either it is going to have a value of uh, uh, 0 or negative or something which is very very close to 0 maybe a few cents or maybe just a dollar or something like that. Uh, in any case it is going to be less than the value of the call option. So we have just manipulated the put call parity condition to find out the value of the put option now and now let us uh, substitute our numbers into it. So the value of put option is equal to the value of the call which we have found out $9.13. So let us write that $9.13 plus the present value of the exercise price 
we have already found out the present value of the exercise price here. So uh, since we don't remember what number it gave us, let us do that one more time. 56 over 1.0725 and that gives us 52.21. That is the present value of the exercise price, 52.21. And from that, we subtract the value of the stock, which is $60 and this is going to give us $1.34 and that is the value of our put option and what we observe is it is less as compared to the value of the call option. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye.